Marketing Made Simple TV is a great show because, well, and given all the complexity that we as marketers face every day, couldn't we afford for marketing to be a little simpler? Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. I'm Jeff Ogden, the host of the show, and we're thrilled to have you back once again. And we've got another great guest for you. Scott Brinker, Chief Martech. Is he's a former guest on the show, and we're bringing him back because he's got a brand new pamphlet to say, a new brand of marketing. So let's bring Scott back and talk about this great content that he just created. Hi, Scott. So yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I mean the uh, this booklet pamphlet. Uh, it's only forty pages, so uh, you know, in, in a world of snackable media, this is a snackable book. Um, I, I created it because, you know, I run a blog, Chief Marketing Technologist, that talks a lot about the issues of managing technology under marketing's umbrellas today. And um, th that's all fine, but sometimes I feel like we need to step back and sort of take a look at, well, why is this technology explosion and marketing so important? And what's the, the purpose of how marketers should think about applying technology uh, to accomplish their mission. So this was intended to kind of frame that whole, why is technology so important in marketing today? So this is your book. It, as you say in here, why did you call it the romance between marketing and technology? Well, you know, I mean, again, the the intersection between marketing and technology has just become so rich these days. Okay, I, I guess rich is um, maybe not the right adjective. Uh, depending on who you are, it, it might be frightening, it might be overwhelming, it might be exhausting. Um, you know, I mean, so much of what marketing is wrestling with today has technological components. But Again, the, the great thing about this technology, I, I, I know it's a challenge to figure out what do we do with all this stuff, how do we make it all work, but the great thing about it is to the degree that we can harness it, it's about delivering incredibly just better experiences to our customers. It's about changing the way we operate marketing to make us tremendously uh, more efficient. Um, and so I guess what I was looking for in this 40-page little mini book is how to help marketers really appreciate the romance of what technology can do for marketing in the big picture. Yeah, I think uh, to sum it up, it is an exciting time to be in marketing because it's the, the change is, is tremendous and you go through seven mega trends. Why don't you just introduce those seven trends to us? Sure. So I think when you consider that, okay, technology and marketing are all intertwined, can we actually break that down a bit? You know, what aspects of technology are changing how we do marketing? And to me, there are seven trends. We can uh, bring up that uh, slide number two if you want. It starts with, first and foremost, the trend everybody knows, the shift from a traditional world to a digital world. And while that's certainly not a revelation, I think it's worth just setting, setting the stage to realize that you know, digital isn't just like, you know, something we can take for granted still. Um, it is really changing uh, the relationships and how we interface with our customers. It's changing the entire way in which uh, marketing is able to operate uh, at this point. And so uh, just, you know, with a few pages there, just want to sort of get a sense of the fact that digital isn't just about changing marketing. It isn't just like digital marketing. It really is about digital business. How do we change the way businesses overall interact with their customers? From there, we get to uh, the second trend, which again, a lot of marketers have talked about. Um, I just wanna you know, make sure that we put it on the table to acknowledge it, is the shift from media silos to converged media. Uh, the folks at Altimeter have you know, written some incredible in-depth uh, papers about this. But when you think about it, marketing has just such a rich legacy of dealing with media in different silos that this world in which you know, advertising and content marketing and social media marketing are all intertwined is really, I mean, it's just tremendously different than how marketing had been structured and managed even just five years ago. 
so we have to sort of recognize it's that technology in the digital sphere that has actually caused all these media types to converge. And then that leads us to the third trend, which uh, you know the folks at uh, HubSpot really, um, you know, Dharma Shah and Brian Halligan were really, you know, the pioneers leading this of this shift of marketing's polarity from what used to be largely the business of outbound messages. Um, you know, how do we broadcast messages to the largest number of people through, you know, uh, television advertising and display advertising and things like that, to this mode where we're trying to create an inbound pool that the technology of search and social have what made inbound actually possible, um, and they've only gone more sophisticated here, uh, you know, over the past five years. So, you, you know, the world goes from traditional to digital. In the process, these different kinds of media converge. In the process, the polarity of marketing shifts from outbound to inbound. And then we start to get into, well, what's actually happening at these inbound touch points, which is the fourth shift. And to me, one of the most fascinating, and it's this evolution of marketing used to be in the business of delivering communications. And increasingly, we're in the business of delivering experiences. That when someone comes to our website, it's not just about the content that we communicate there. It's how does that whole experience work for them? Are they able to find what they want? You know, if they sign up, you know, how is that sign up process? If they use some sort of application on our website, whether it's like a configurator or, you know, they participate in a contest or any of these sorts of interactive experiences, that is now becoming the responsibility of marketing. Because if people don't have great experiences, they turn right around and, you know, they write about you and, you know, search, searchable media and, you know, social media um, and say, wow, that was terrible um, versus, you know, if you can deliver these really amazing experiences that people are going to then put back out into, you know, search and social, just what an incredible uh, experience they got from you. So the shift from communications to experiences is huge. And then that leads into the fifth trend which is, okay, well, when you're talking about creating experiences, I mean, marketing used to be in the business, to oversimplify, of leveraging art and copy to deliver those communications. And now that we're in the business of delivering experiences, we have to become fluent with leveraging code and data. You know, data being the things that both feed how codes, code operates, uh, but also, yeah, the information we get back of, you know, as people interact with our code-driven experiences, what do we learn about them? And the point I make in the book is it's not that every marketer has to become a programmer. You don't have to have to know code yourself, but you have to recognize that marketing is now got within its sphere of responsibility purchasing software, operating software, using online systems that are driven by software as a means of engaging with prospects and customers. And so even if you're not fluent with code yourself, you have to get pretty darn comfortable with using tools that are based on this code. Um, and it's a different, it's a different skill set. Now the, um, the sixth trend is one I'm sure everyone feels viscerally, we, we, we face this every day. Um, I just wanted to sort of make sure we put it in words so it's on the table, is the shift from rigid planning to agile iterations. I mean, marketing, it, it's, it's kind of like if you were going to pick one artifact of the marketing world that has persisted over decades, it was the yearly marketing plan, right? You know, we'd figure everything out we wanted to do for the year, we'd write our big tome, and then everyone would go off and execute. You know, it became the, uh, the hymnal by which uh, the marketing choir would all sing. But as I mentioned in the book, the, the nature of this digital environment where things change so quickly, uh, you know, competition changes, markets change. Um, on the plus side, we actually have the benefit of getting feedback on a much faster basis uh, from what's working or not working with customers and adjusting as we go along. That I, instead of 
you know, gospel, it's now becoming more jazz. The tempo is sped up. Uh, and so we need to take a look at managing marketing in a different way that doesn't go by that yearly planning rhythm, but has this sort of faster cadence. And this is the shift to things like agile marketing. Uh, you know, certainly having a overarching vision, an overarching plan, but being able to execute on that in these more manageable chunks. You know, in, in agile marketing, typically it's like a two to four week sprint. Um, and again, this is all things that sort of technology has required us to become more agile. And also at the same time, technology gives us some of the tools to help manage this agility. And then the last trend, which uh, may not be popular with some of my agency friends, is the shift of marketing center of gravity. And again, I mean, you know, we can look at, you know, popular TV shows like Mad Men. I mean, for, for the longest time, the real sex appeal of marketing, where all the real dollars lived, um, just where all the energy was going, was through these really large agencies and Madison Avenue. Um, you know, this was where the best talent, you know, in advertising was going, and advertising was by far the largest piece of the pie for marketing. But what's happened here, if you look back at all these other trends, you know, the shift into digital, the shift into converged media, which took away a lot of the power of just traditional advertising, you know, that changing of polarity to being inbound, it no longer being sufficient just to communicate ideas, but you have to be able to deliver experiences that live up to those ideas. They involve software now that lives inside your company. It's generating data that your company owns and must you know, be responsible for. Um, you're having to now operate at this higher tempo. You take all these different trends and you put them together and you recognize that marketing has its center of gravity now inside the company. And that isn't, it doesn't mean that agencies aren't still important or that they don't have a role to play, but it's no longer feasible for a company to outsource its brand to an agency and figure, okay, well, the agency will just make this all work for me. The CMO, the marketing team inside the company, really needs to be, have their hand on the wheel in driving the coordination of all these different capabilities. So it's those seven trends, uh, those meta trends as I call them, uh, that really end up leading to the conclusion that marketing has become a technology powered discipline and it needs to integrate technology into its DNA. Very interesting, Scott. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty interesting trends there. Uh, yeah, and it just seems to me that the whole cause of this, that was the Teutonic change in marketing, is the change in balance of power from sellers to buyers. Buyers are in control now, and you can't talk to them the way you talked to them in the past. What is your thought on that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, so much of this had to do with information asymmetry. Uh, that for the longest time, buyers had so much more, uh, sellers had so much more information than buyers about their own products, about even competitive products. It was very expensive for a buyer to search for alternatives. And uh, in particular, salespeople for, you know, uh, you know uh, certainly for B2B sales, uh, even for, you know, more sophisticated um, higher end consumer sales, I mean car sales, you know, classic example. Um, yeah, the salespeople for the seller really had the most information and they leveraged that to control the relationship, you know, as much as they could with the buyer. And so, yeah, when we, when we shifted into this mode where, you know, I mean, again, it's been 20 years now since the web really took off. And now today we're in a place where so much information about anything and everything you want is out there and it's open and it's available. And even if it isn't, your ability to use social networks to connect with other peers, you know, other buyers who have been through these things. I mean, just our ability to communicate and tap this information is just huge and it's blown away the information asymmetry, you know, that companies and salespeople in particular used to have. 
And so now, I mean, salespeople still have a role to play. They're still very important in a lot of businesses to making these relationships with customers happen. But they can't really be leveraging information asymmetry as the basis of that relationship the way they used to. Very interesting, Scott. Now, one of the things which I saw in your book is uh, looking at the big picture, you kind of say that, that marketing is going through this like stair step trend. Talk to us a little bit about that, and I think you have a slide to show us on that as well. Sure, yeah, if you want to bring up that uh, slide there. Um, and this is actually a, a metaphor that I have to attribute to Gord Hotchkiss. Uh, he's a columnist on Media Post, and he, he writes a lot about the strategic evolution of marketing. And one of the things he had said in one of his columns last year was he made this analogy to what is called punctuated equilibrium in evolution. Uh, and to just very briefly recap, you know, scientists have come to believe that evolution doesn't just happen steadily over time. It's not like species just, you know, continuously and slowly change. Then instead, species tend to actually be pretty stable for very long periods of time until there is some sort of significant disruption in the environment. And it's when that disruption occurs that all of a sudden, yeah, you get this explosion of different variations, you know, different species trying to figure out how do we adapt you know, I mean, not consciously, of course, in you know, their case, but, you know, evolutionarily, how do we try these different variations that can succeed, that can survive, that can really thrive under this new environment? And that analogy, I think, is very apt to marketing today, that for 50 years, marketing was a relatively stable environment. And so the kinds of skills that marketers had, the sort of organizational structures we used for managing marketing, um, I mean, these things that we've largely taken for granted as, oh, well, this is what marketing is. This is how marketing works. Um, what's happened now is this, the explosion of these, you know, seven different trends, these meta trends, each one of them has kind of been like a disruption, and together they've just been a cataclysmic disruption. They have changed the environment so much that we have to recognize we can't keep doing marketing. We can't keep managing marketing the way we used to. We have to be willing to experiment with new types of talents, with new types of organizational structures. Some will work, some will won't, but that's the only way we're going to find what's the combination of structuring marketing uh, that's really going to get to this next plateau, the next level of what life is like after this digital disruption is just the new accepted reality. Very interesting, Scott, and interesting discussion. So where do people, where, if people who want to get this book, where do they go and where do they learn more about you? Sure. So if you visit uh, chiefmartech.com, uh, C-H-I-E-F-M-A-R-T-E-C, Dot com. Uh, there's actually a link for this book uh, on uh, every page of the site. Um, it's, it's free to download. You don't even have to fill out an email. Just click a link and you can download the PDF. Um, the file, I've given everyone permission to share it, distribute it, print it, whatever you'd like. For me, uh, the, the, the purpose in writing this was just to help with the dialogue not so much with people who already get this, as I'm sure a number of your viewers do, but when they're having conversations with other peers or other executives who are still trying to get their head around this, I just want a really short piece that would help explain, you know, why, why does this matter? Why do we have to change? And what's the right way to frame it? I want to thank uh, Scott Brinker, Chief Martech, for being a great guest on the show. Great lesson on experiment, try new things, it, it is a time of great change in marketing. So just get your arms around it. Just relax, take it in, and adapt all the time. Great information. Before we go, we want to thank sponsors because sponsors make this show go. Avatage, great content marketing company, content strategy, avatage.com, digitalethos.org, educational, communication strategy group, brand telling, Arthur Germain, good good guy, good friend. And Watch It Too provides this this. TV on the web show that delivers this wonderful quality, their new streaming pro product. 
Marketing Made Simple TV premieres every Thursday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific at www.marketingmadesimple.tv. So until next time, we'll see you again on Marketing Made Simple TV.